How are you doing? Very well. Yeah, how was your flight? I think I've been looking forward to this visit to yeah. come by in Avenso. Okay, great. And I think it is worth my long flight. Nice. We are actually happy that you're here. Very welcome, Hushkal Dinis. Um, so, um, I'm going to ask you a few questions regarding the nanotechnology uh, industry. Um, the first one is, what are you doing right now in the electrospending space? And can you tell us a bit about your current work that you're doing? Hmm. So, as you know that I started uh, electrospinning research nearly 25 years ago. Since then, worldwide, there are many groups that uh, have been pursuing uh, some of those ideas and in a very interesting way. So, as someone that has been in this field for a long time, mm -hmm. I always feel I need to try the topics and areas uh, which are not yet emerged. So, for example, uh, one area which I'm looking at is how do we sensorize our brains so that we can find ways and means to detect neuronal processes and then amplify them and transmit them. So this is how we use uh, nanofibers. In the same way, another biggest challenge is uh, climate change and which is associated with uh, materials. So my focus is how do we use electrospun nanofibers wherever application that has the potential to reduce the material intensity. Yeah. It has the potential to reduce the carbon emissions. It has the potential to reduce the total amount of chemicals and hazardous substances. Yeah. Uh, that need to be used in the process. Save the planet. You save the planet, save the people yeah. and the planet. Yes, That's definitely. Right. <laughs> okay, uh, the second question I have. Uh, for a newcomer, somebody who is new to this industry, who wants to start researching on electrospinning and nanofibers, uh, or maybe even start considering this, their thesis on it, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So what sorts of tips or guidance would you give to them? Sure. So I'm aware of uh, scientific research is expensive mm -hmm. and different countries and different regions, different institutions has different kinds of support systems and capacity. So, but the nanotechnology is about doing research at the sub-micron sub level, that means very fine dimension mm -hmm. and it's about investigating uh, properties and behaviors of chosen material at a sub-micron level and then applying them for a specific application. So, when a researcher want to work in this domain, generally they need a lot more resources because the nanotechnology research, there are many methods. So I found uh, electrospinning is relatively less expensive and you can start off and then uh, there is enough complexity uh, that could be studied, yeah. which is suitable for pursuing a PhD. Because PhD is about uh, understanding a question deeply coming up with the best uh, innovation or a solution possible. Yeah. So that's basically the PhD. Mm -hmm. So that requires uh, the students need to have the uh, means to do that way. Mm -hmm. And I believe this would provide that. Yeah. And then good thing is uh, over the years we created a lot of literature. Uh, they could read that literature. From that they can self-study and build their own uh, line of thinking and then advance the field. Yeah. Then after that, they could actually see this as a way of thinking. Yeah. They could do some other technique, some other method. Once you know, it's like language. Once you know the language, you know how to speak. Yes. You choose which sentence you want to construct yeah. and what you want to say. Yeah. But you need the language. Same way, it's a high technology method. Once you know it, you know how to access them without fear, uh, with confidence. Perfect, perfect. Uh, that's actually a very beautiful answer because uh, finding a solution to a problem is what the PhD is basically. And actually, to be honest, it's not my answer. <laughs> <laughs> I went around the world, I meet uh, lots of young people, yeah. and including my own uh, students. This is what they tell me. Oh. So basically, I internalized their own experiences yeah. and then I conveyed that as, uh, as yeah. uh, you know, 
So it's actually real examples yeah. uh, what I came across in many countries. Okay, being um, from one of the pioneers of this industry basically, um, how do you feel about the current attention being given to this uh, nanofiber research and uh, electrospinning in general? And uh, do you think it is enough or uh, do you think there should be more? Very good question. Uh, if you look at numbers, it appears we have an exponential increase in the scientific activity mm -hmm. on a worldwide basis. Okay. But when you actually dig deeper, you find only few countries have a serious uh, uh, efforts. And most countries and uh, in several universities, for example, there are 20,000 universities, hardly any universities in that large number is involved in scientific research. That's already a fundamental problem. And nearly 300 million students go to the university, but most of them don't even experience research. So what I feel is, uh, while it is definitely exponentially growing in the last 20, 25 years, but I think it has a much bigger potential when I look at the scale of the uh, research community that could be potentially there mm -hmm. and uh, that means those governments, those companies, organizations have to further invest uh, resources and my recent meeting at World Bank, uh, we were talking about this, about certain countries, actually more, many countries, uh, they're not sufficiently investing in research and if they do, I think then, I think uh, you would mm -hmm. see a much higher uh, acceleration in this field yeah. hmm. okay so you do think there should be more absolutely because <laughs> I can even I can phrase it the other way uh, if I had to see if, I, if you allow me Becky to say it yeah. uh, the best endeavor any human being can do is generate knowledge yeah. accumulate knowledge and transfer the knowledge these three things is what make humanity to survive thrive on planet Earth. So in other words, anybody doing research is basically they are creating some level of knowledge. Well, the knowledge uh, varies, but mm -hmm. fundamentally in the pursuit of knowledge, either you are generating, creating, accumulating or transferring, is already a noble thing than doing anything else. So because of that, <laughs> I strongly encourage people to do that. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Um, okay, where do you feel the experts should focus on or turn their attention to when researching about nanofibers in the modern day? In modern day, I would think, uh, of course, many areas people are pursuing, they're all very good. If I had to down select from many areas to few areas in the nanofibers, I would say the world is looking for sustainable materials. So how can we further advance this field so it is more sustainable? That means the materials that come out of it are sustainable. Second, of course, is the scalability. Uh, there's already a large machine, scalability is there, but I'm talking about scalability that is of really large scale. So that means that will reach uh, all the human beings on planet uh, because they will have the products and yeah. resources. Yeah. Yeah. Biodegradable products basically. Yeah. Yes, that's one. that's one. And then many others. Many others. Many yeah. others. So I would say uh, one should think in that direction. Then I can also say if somebody is really interested in uh, uh, something really creative ideas, one could think of uh, wearables and these are very smart wearables. They actually sense your uh, mood, they sense your uh, well-being. Yes. And then there is a way uh, you could, they could communicate and then necessary actions can be taken. Yeah. So I think that, that's what the humanity needs. The reason is um, uh, now there are studies, people are living in uh, crowded places and cities, but they're alone. So, they're lonely. So, they need this uh, better way of knowing about themselves. And I think that's where, again, uh, future uh, devices out of uh, nanotechnology, nanofibers, yeah. can make a difference. Yeah. Great, yeah, good insight. And other than that, you can always have, you know, for example, uh, we know now because of COVID-19 and uh, other reasons, WHO said 
uh, we should be prepared for the future pandemics and future uh, events. The other one is the quality of air. And most urbanized communities, the quality of air, both indoor and outdoor, is not sufficiently high quality. Mm -hmm. So that requires, again, uh, good levels of filtration. Yeah. Same applies to water. Mm -hmm. And now you can further extrapolate to the biotechnology and so on. So I would say uh, major areas that all require further advances and one could apply, see how to apply nanofibers there. Agree, agree, yeah. Okay, another question that I have for you is, uh, so in the near future, what application or industries do you expect to heavily incorporate uh, nanofiber technology, in your opinion, basically? And which of these do you feel, feel will take off? Right, so clearly the nanofibers made a huge uh, contribution in terms of the air filtration. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, the need and demand for air filtration will continue because the world is still urbanizing. Uh, we need a better quality air everywhere, which is impacted by many reasons. So I still think that uh, air filtration based diverse products mm -hmm. would be further innovative okay. and there will be a lot of expansion there followed by water and the biotechnology area. Then the other one is uh, healthcare, uh, but it's a niche application. Mm -hmm. uh, some of these uh, healthcare products or medical solutions uh, require nanofibers. Then as an extension of that, uh, wearables, once they are advanced, I think that would be another growth area. Another interesting area, I believe, is the energy systems. Mm -hmm. So in the future energy systems, there is a role for nanofibers mm -hmm. in the energy storage, energy generation, energy transportation and conversion. So again, that's the Technology also, I yes. think. Yes, yeah. yeah. That's right. So in the industrial setting, basically, if I talk about, what type of technologies would you recommend pertaining to electro spinning? I think that for industrial, main thing is they need uh, uh, complete reliability and reproducibility. Mm -hmm. And of course, it is economies of scale, it is also about the price points, and it is also about uh, availability of skilled people to do the job. So I think uh, essentially, in a, in a short answer is scaling up, mm -hmm. and in a way, it's highly reliable, reproducible. Thank you so much. Yes.